Snog marry the void is absolutely mental. I asked the public whether they would snog, marry or avoid this girl. What do you think they said? They said marry. I'd avoid her because it looks like somebody sneezed black gunk around her eyes. Hello friends, today we will be discussing the disturbing British TV show called Snog Marry the Void, which aired in the UK between 2008 to 2013. This show was marketed as the world's first make under program, which contrasted with a lot of shows at the time, which was kind of like a makeover thing, like making someone look better by giving them more makeup, whereas this was doing the opposite, I guess. The aim of the show was basically to strip back people's appearances and get rid of that fake look, as they call it, in favour for more natural beauty. These are the buzzwords that the show uses, right? These aren't my words. Now, when I describe the concept of the show like that, you could say it could have some positive kind of effects, you know, like making people believe in themselves and not having to rely on, like, external factors to, to give them self-confidence. However, this wasn't the way the show tried to do it. And we're going to walk through the structure now, and you'll see why. So first off, they'd introduce the person that was deemed too fake looking by the producers. I like to be different from everyone else. I like to be like Barbie. <laughs> I'm Louise, I'm 24 from Liverpool. Is there anything wrong with how this girl looks? Like, does this girl really need a make on that? Like, yeah, it's a little bit wacky, but you can see by her face, she seems happy, right? With this show, I always think, who has put the people forward for this? Because it seems like the people are happy, like they don't need a change. My outfits are, they have to be sparkly, revealing. <laughs> right, well that's this video not getting monetized. Thanks party girl Barbie. You've got a son to feed, I've got a dog to feed. At least put some bloody clothes on. Christ, if she has a make on, there'll be now left. Again, she's happy. She doesn't need this show to give her any confidence. She seems to have a, uh, enough confidence to get through life. Hi, uh, my name's Shelley. I'm 17 years old. I'm from Blackburn. If I could sum up my style in three words, it would be big, bold and brown. Big hair, bold colour and brown skin. Does she have a twister mat on her wall? She's like Spider-Man. She's just inviting uh, Peter Park around and them two are just getting funky on the wall. Christ. Also, this girl is 17. Okay, she should not be going on a show where you get, you, you, you change your look. You're 17. This could lead you down a very dark path. I'm one of eight children. My brother and sisters always take them out, they always call me oranges. You can see if she's one of their children, she's clearly trying to look this way to kind of stand out and clearly like she's confident with it, right? This is the point I'm just trying to have a hope. They're all seeming confident prior to the show. Hey! I'm Jasmine and I'm from Newport and I am the queen of the charity shop. Imagine being the, the queen of the charity shops. Yes, she is. The queen of the Salvation Army. All rise. I would describe my style as crazy. These are looking pretty good now. Vintage. I really like it. Completely over the top and majorly colourful. Right, when you look... Right, okay. When you look at her, possibly it's a bit much. From an outsider. However, if she doesn't think it's too much, why should she change? Like, how she looks is not affecting anybody else. Those eyebrows are magical. I don't know anyone that has the confidence to walk around with eyebrows like that. It's like a zebra crossing. I love it. And even sometimes on the show, the producers would get couples to come on together. Tie it up, like, in a ponytail. It's going to be quite hard because I haven't tied his hair up. I like a lot of studs and I wear um, a lot of, like, studded wear. And and collars, especially big, spiked, chunky collars. Christ, can you imagine these two going through the metal detector when they get on holiday? <laughs> It'll give the machine a heart attack. Uh, I was three months old when I got my first ears pierced, and then I was nine when I got them done again, 12 when I got my belly pierced, and then I got my nose. Oh my God, how, that is insane. Imagine, did your mother allow that? Jeez. I don't know how these two are going to look when they get their make under. That's the thing. I feel like they're going to look so strange because we're used to, like, looking at them with, with that look. I actually think it's cool, though. Like, I think if the more piercings you have, like, the more confidence you have, it's great. I was 15 and I got my first lip piercing. It kind of hurts, but you get one and you want another one. Imagine just having, like, cereal, though. Like, what happens when you're just eating bran flakes? If you got to, like, does it get stuck in, in your outside piercings? Or what happens if someone just, like, brings a magnet out of, like, a Christmas ca uh, cracker? Are you, like, like, whoa, no, put it back in. I know I'm attracted to you, but this is too much. I think people automatically assume that we're gonna be nasty people. Yes. That we're gonna 
to start fights. See, I wouldn't imagine that, looking at these two. I wouldn't imagine they'd be nasty. I imagine they'd just be quite sweet, actually. Maybe he's got a little bit of devil worshipping in them. But hey, I can deal with a little bit. I right, just to the side. As long as you don't worship the devil in front of us, that's fine. It's it's this thing in the back. I feel like this is like, like, like some sort of voodoo doll. You can spot them from a mile off, the ones who are going to go. The ones that have been talking about you before you've kind of reached them. As soon as you're gone, they're going to start laughing or they're going to start talking. Oh my God. Does this actually happen? If you are watching this at home and you have like a lot of PSNs like these two, do people stare at you like that? Because every single person they walked past was like, Awful, awful. You should be ashamed of yourself, God. Oh, uh, what does your mother think? And after they introduce each of these contestants, they always have the next stage, which is like their family's opinion on how they look. She dresses like my grandma would dress up. And it's vintage. Ever since I can remember, I've wanted to be different. I don't know if the friend was actually joking there. I feel like the friend seemed a little bit embarrassed. Like, yeah, she dresses like me grandma. If you're a real friend, surely you're like, you're, you're proud of, of what your friend's wearing. Like this person seems very subdued in what she wears. So I can imagine if like them two are just going out, just like, why the fuck, why, why is she wearing about 20 different colours? Why does she look like Joseph in the Technicolor Dream Court? She looks like Jason Donovan. I work in a little pub in Killian and I love it. I think that means I eyebrows are uh, a bit crazy, really. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so during the hiring process, that was a stumbling block. Everything else was about her was great, but those eyebrows, uh, that really nearly, nearly lost uh, her opportunity of working here. Imagine Nelly not getting a job because of your eyebrows. That would be so humbling. They have got to go. They are like two slugs about to fight each other. I think the bigger the eyebrows, the more confident I feel, especially when I go out. See? She's happy. Maybe she wants two slugs fighting each other on her forehead. What about that? But please get rid of this crazy makeup and these eyebrows. <laughs> Let me have a look at your eyebrows. You haven't even got eyebrows. Oh, you do a little bit. No, their eyebrows are kind of on fleek. What's the plug and routine, Marcus? Hand it over, fella. Don't be a gatekeeper. This is my challenge to you. Bring back my little daughter or it'll be the worst for you. Little bit creepy from dad. Um, Are we just going to brush past that and go to the horse? This is a bit demonic. If it's the last thing you will do. He's like Liam Neeson. I have a very specific set of skills. You bring my daughter back to me without those eyebrows and I'll let you off the hook. I love my daughter. She's fantastic looking, but I just need it. <laughs> I knew there was a big butt coming there. Yeah, she's really clever. She's really funny. She's really caring. She has everything. But... <laughs> But I just need it toned down a little bit, not too much orange, and a little bit reserved, and then she'd look gorgeous. But why? For what reason? Like, why do you need it toned down? Because you probably don't have the confidence to be like that, but if she does, why Why would you want to tone it down? Like, why would you want to look like everyone else? You know what I mean? After this, each person would then meet Pod. Pod is like this computer, which is just the voice of a human, but like through this massive AI computer thing. And that's basically their point of contact to the producers in the show and this is this pod is basically being really mean to them and saying what like basically whatever it thinks but it's actually the producers saying it but they get away with it because it's actually coming out of a machine this is really odd i don't think i'm explaining this well and the first stage that pod takes the contestant through is called public analysis which involves members of the public getting showed the contestant's face and then they decide if they'd snog marry or avoid them it's so brutal and what was even more brutal about this is they got the contestant Contestant to react to this live public analysis I asked the public whether they would snog marry or avoid this girl. What do you think they said? They said marry I'd avoid her because it looks like somebody sneezed black gunk around her eyes what? Let's have a little look at you sir. Look at your eyes. You've got butthole eyes. Your eyes look like they've got piles if we're gonna if we're gonna bring up eyes This guy would clearly not avoid her. I'm sorry if they were in a nightclub or I don't know they, they, they got introduced at a party or something This guy is not on her level. It's not very imaginative is it? And that sounds like something that a five-year-old would say. You're the one dressed like a toy <laughs> See, this is what I mean. This 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 AI computer is an arsehole as well. Everyone is just an arsehole to the contestants in this show. They come on the show with confidence and then it's just beaten out of them. That was what this show was made for. I would avoid this girl because she looks really cheap and tacky. Oh, says the guy with the, the ASOS glasses. We're gonna talk about stuff that's on offer. I'd definitely avoid this girl because she looks like she's fallen through a children's fancy dress shop. Alright, well you look like you touch children. Two can play that game. Not not that, not that I meant the 
insulting game, not the... I asked the public a series of multiple choice questions. Firstly, is her skin like a soft peach, a sticky orange, a muddy field? Mm, sticky orange, I think. Uh, sticky orange. I think her skin looks like a muddy field. Sorry, Dr Eggman. Maybe you should have a look at yourself before you, you take the piss out of someone else, should you? Next, I asked the public if they would like to snog, marry or avoid you. I think probably snog. Definitely wouldn't marry her. I'd avoid her because she seems like a party girl. <laughs> I am a party girl. She looks a lot like Donatella Versace, actually. Donatella Versace. Well, that's a good thing, no? This woman, this woman is clearly old and has still got it, right? That's that's a compliment, if anything. I would avoid that she's very orange in the face. I would definitely avoid her because she <laughs> doesn't really look like my type of girl. Avoid her, avoid her, full stop. These are pretty, pretty girls they've got on, and all of these men apparently would avoid them. Apparently, all these men just have standards that are unattainable. Unattainable. Can't even speak. Oh, the anger running through my veins right now. I would avoid her because her makeup makes her look like a drag queen. <laughs> A drag queen, really? I would avoid her because her makeup makes her look like a clown. Thanks. <laughs> it's so brutal. Yeah, I'd avoid her because uh, she looks like she would fight Batman in the night. It's like, okay. To be fair, I feel like with this girl, like, this is probably quite, like, an acquired taste, I imagine. You know, like, this is the one girl that, I, that fair enough, some lads might just not be into the kind of eyebrows and everything. My point earlier was if she's happy with it, she probably isn't seeking male validation. I'd probably avoid her. She just looks scruffy. <laughs> it's like what? It's like why do they be so harsh? She looks scruffy. How does she look scruffy? Just quickly, I'm gonna stop this video to say that 70.6% of you are not subscribed to the channel. Ugh. If you haven't pressed subscribe before, make sure you do so you never miss a video from this channel. Also, YouTube has been unsubscribing people. People have been messaging us this, so just double check that you are subscribed to the channel still. And let's get back. To snog married a void. So as you can see from this aspect of the show, it's so clear that the entire show is kind of based on like male validation. So they're trying to make these lasses appeal to men, even if these lasses are happy in themselves being like independent. The message that this show is trying to show off is you can't be happy unless men think you're attractive, I guess. It's just weird. It's like, why should they need to base their happiness on that? Because then you're basing your happiness on what somebody else thinks of you. This is what this stage of the show is trying to portray. It's like it's mad and it's probably had like a lasting effect on people my age because this was on when we were younger So this is probably one of the big reasons if you watch the show why you might care what other people think rather than like being happy with how you look yourself Like this girl 17 and this show is teaching her like you shouldn't be happy unless these men want to snog or marry you The next stage after public analysis is called the deep cleanse Which is basically where they just take all of their makeup off so they're kind of like freshed faced as if they've just woken up My eyelashes aren't coming off. I think you'll find they are. Please put on your deep cleanse uniform. You're going to see me spartan the white one. Show me those pads, Louise. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the other side, Louise. <laughs> and after this, the final stage of them changing is the make under stage. This is where Pod gives them a brand new fashion sense and brand new makeup routine and basically changes everything about them that they liked and was unique about them so that they're validated by males so that they can get their validation from lads. Three, two, one. What have they done to her? I'm sorry, now she just looks like she'd be really good at admin work. She just looks like she should work in, like, an office now. She had so much, like, individuality before. Like, she was just kind of feeling herself. Now I feel like she just looks like any business person. They've literally took away all that individuality. How is she going to feel confident looking like this? Oh, my God, what the hell? I do not even look like me. What do you think, Vicky? I don't know. That means she hates it. That means she's gonna go exactly back to how she looked before. She wants to forget this moment ever happened. <laughs> What is that on her head? Why have you put a headband on her? What? Who is the stylist here? Certainly not Gok Wan. Oh my god, look at me! Do you like it, Louise? I love it. Oh, fair. Okay, she actually liked it. But I, again, where's that individuality? Like before, she had like this, I don't know, she had like this character to her. Now she just kind of looks like everyone. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> they didn't even do anything to her. They just cut her fringe a little bit, didn't they? And then give her like a like some tights. Like what is this? Is this meant to improve her look? Now she looks like a like a primary school assistant teacher. You know? Like she's giving us that kind of vibe. Like the nice teacher. The one that you could go and cry to every single day. What? Just me? <laughs> Oh my 
I got. Okay, this is the only one, just for me personally. I think this looks better. But it doesn't matter what I think. That's feeding into what the show is thinking. It's trying to get me to think that she's more attractive. But does she feel more attractive? Oh, that was messing with my own head now. Express make under. Before she looked like 20, now she looks like 40. What is that dress? You, you've dressed her in a Wetherspoons plate for Christ's sake. Does she get a free pint with that dress? They even did it for the goth couple and their transformation is like genuinely mental. Let the make under commence. <laughs> God. I'm sorry. I think he looks better before. Now he just looks like a chimney sweep. Or he looks like a failed extra out of Peaky Blinders. This is Shamus Telby, you know? So yeah, the main idea of this is basically just to make everyone look like an NPC. It's just to make everyone look the same and take away their, their individuality. And after they get past the make under stage, they then do the public analysis again to see if men would snog or marry them this time and not avoid them. And with every single one, it always ends up that the men want to marry them. I'm pretty sure that this market research is, is tampered with in some way to fit the narrative of the show. I would snog her because her outfit looks great and she's got nice legs. I'm sorry, but you went through that entire make under, changed everything that you loved about yourself for this man in a cap to say that he would snog you because he likes your legs. Is it really worth it? Right, oh, thank God, the man that wears his cap a little too high up than it should be wants to snog me now. That makes me feel confident in myself. I would snog her. She has a pretty face. So these two men don't even want to marry her. They want to just snog her now. And is she meant to feel happy about this? Like that two men will snog her, but they don't want to marry her because they're not that into her. It's not. It's hardly a compliment. What do you think they said now? Marry. I'd snog her because she looks gorgeous and she just likes to have a good time and a lot of fun. Oh, she wanted to marry and she got a snog. I snog her, she's got nice eyes, she looks confident and fun. <laughs> well done, love. You changed everything about yourself, and now uh, PC men will, will snog you. I wanna snog her because she looks quite pretty. Quite pretty. Quite is the word you'd use, is it? What a gentleman. I think she looks a uh, really nice girl, very homely, friendly, my sort of girl. Imagine someone describing you as, oh, she looks very homely. What the fuck does that mean? Oh yeah, she looks like she stays in the house a lot, doesn't get much sunlight. Like, what is that? She looks homely. What kind of a compliment is that? Look at her face. There is nothing behind this woman's eyes but just pain that everything about her has been changed. What emotion are you registering? I think people like me better when I look like this. Oh, that's so sad. It's just, again, I know I keep repeating myself, but it's it's promoting that you should care what people think, and you shouldn't. And after this, they're then presented to their families to see how they rate them. I am so nervous that I'm thinking, oh my God, what happens if I burst into tears and cry because she looks so pretty? <laughs> Nobody is doing your false damn anymore. Because you look amazing like that. Thank you, Pod, for changing me and making me feel good about myself. You've done a good job. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. These people need therapy after this show. It's the fact that parents are trying to encourage them. Like, no, 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 you look great. You look great. You look great. You don't stand out. That's what we want. Now, we've skimmed through a lot of different episodes there without really, like, focusing too much on the actual person in them. But that's what I want to do now. And the girl that I want to focus on now is a girl called Harriet. <laughs> Wells, I'm 20 and I'm a lead girl and I am glamour obsessed. Okay, I'm just gonna come out with it. This girl does not need, and like, she doesn't need changed. Like, she looks class as how she looks. Like, I guarantee 99% of men, if they were asked, would not avoid this person. We then get to see what our boyfriend thinks of how she looks. What does my boyfriend think of her look? Does he better like her? The fake tan is a, is a nightmare. My bed sheets are constantly covered in fake tan. Oh my god, brother. I feel you. Why is it always like that? It's like some Somebody's murdered Garfield on my bed. The lasagna's everywhere. Molly May, can you not bring out a fake tan that, that doesn't go everywhere? If you could do one thing for me, that would be great. Yeah, when we go out, makeup's always flawless. Her hair's always massive, and I always think that she looks just as good without makeup on and without her hair done. Right, that's actually, that's a nice thing to say, right? That you, you think your, your girlfriend looks as good without makeup on. Surely, like, if she feels like that gives her more confidence, you should be, like, champion that, right? You should be like, yeah, right? Wear your makeup. You look class, love. You look just as good. If she was out and she wasn't wearing any makeup and they met in the club, would he have been attracted to her? I'm unsure. Have it on a night out? I would imagine she's very wild, very loud, very drunk. It's chaotic. Isn't that what you're meant to be on a night out? Who wants to go on a night out with someone that just sits like this in the corner? 
Not being loud. Who wants to be friends with that person? Not me. We then get Harriet's first interaction with Pod, and Pod just attempts to beat all the self-confidence out of Harriet straight away. Who are you? I'm Harriet. Harriet? Yes, Pod. Does Alice Cooper know you stole his hair? How can you say that? I look totally popular. <laughs> you look like a hairy old rocker. I would like to see who, how the, the person who voices Pod looks. I wonder if they're just this, this stinky troll who lives under a bridge. You're awful. I really don't like you. Well, I really don't like your hairy head, caked on makeup, and don't get me started on the awful outfit. Oh my god, this is so brutal. But I don't understand who signs the people up for this show. It can't be the contestant, because why would they come on? They don't want to change anything about themselves. It has to be a family member. Harriet then goes through the public analysis stage. I asked the public, would you snog, marry, or avoid this girl? Snuck. I'll definitely avoid her because she looks really trashy. <laughs> right, 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 right. Sorry, sir. I'm all about champion self-confidence, but there's not a single chance that you avoid her in any realm. If this girl came onto you in a club, are you telling me that you would avoid her with your light blue and grey sweater stripes on? I don't think so. You're dressed like a brightly coloured Dennis the Menace, for Christ's sake. I'd avoid that girl because she just looks very vain and up herself, really. <laughs> So it's clearly shown that they're just trying to beat out the confidence that Harriet has so that she is basically begging to change. But I also think, like, would Harriet even go for any of these men? I feel like Harriet wouldn't go for any of them three lads that said they would avoid her. Also, she has a boyfriend, so why would she care about what any other lad thinks? She should surely only care what her boyfriend thinks. And her boyfriend seemed to like how she looked. And what is really weird about this particular episode, they even got somebody who appeared on The Apprentice to rate if that snog marry or avoid her. I also asked Ray from The Apprentice. Would you like to know what he said? Unfortunately, with this young lady, she leaves nothing to the imagination. And, you know, I like to be tantalised by what I can't see as opposed to what I can see. And here, quite frankly, I can see a hell of a lot. I'd avoid her. No! No! I've got a question, actually, Pod. Who the fuck is Wraith? Who is Wraith from The Apprentice? And why should we give a fuck what he thinks? I mean, look at him. The man's got curtains, for Christ's sake. He's hardly the, the, the gatekeeper of beauty himself, is he? Jesus. He looks like a, like, a, like, a, like a failed auditionee for The Wolf of Wall Street. This man looks like the Wolf of Wigan. It's also the fact Harriet goes, Ah, oh, no, not Wraith. I could take the three men, but not Wraith from The Apprentice. Ah, oh, how can he turn me down? He was my pass in my relationship. Wraith from The Apprentice was my past. So yeah, for some reason with Harriet's episode, I really feel like they were trying extra hard to ruin her confidence. Like they even pulled in a random celebrity who, for some reason, they've tried to give him more weight because he was on The Apprentice so that he can further dent her confidence. It's a really weird way they're trying to do this. And to destroy Harriet's confidence even more, they then ask the public another question about her. I asked at school, did she get straight A's, straight to the bottom set, Straight to the back of the bike sheds. <gasps> Straight round the back of the bike sheds because she looks easy. Oh, because oh, she looks easy does she i think she was straight around the back of the bike says because she looks trashy as hell oh okay says the man that's dressed like any npc ever this guy literally does dress like peter parker with that river island leather jacket on they're just trying to beat this last down even in the way she replies you can tell she's not really enjoying this she's kind of just she feels a bit awkward and she's like why why are they trying to be as nasty as possible harriet then goes through the deep cleanse stage and what is interesting about this deep cleanse stage is is they let her choose her different kind of parts of a new style. It's a bit like The Sims game. Then choose a new hairstyle. Short and sleek, funky updo, choppy bob with fringe, soft and wavy. This is like going into one of those barbers, like, uh, you know, and they've just got like one to eight and you have to choose what number haircut you want. It is like a real life Sims. Like, why would they be the only options? Choose a celebrity style. Rihanna, Alexa Chung, Sienna Miller, Blake Lively. Yeah, but none of those people look like her. If if you make that style onto her, it's not gonna look as good. Cause most of them lasses have light hair. It then goes to the make under stage where she has her entire look changed. Run the make under. <laughs> Oh my god! 
like I mean you can see it in her reaction she's like ah like it's so underwhelming like yeah she looks pretty but she looked pretty before and probably better before because she was feeling herself and that like that like personality makes you like more attractive you know like if you're not really feeling yourself like it's not all just looks that makes you attractive it's like how you carry yourself and and, and the way she's carried herself after this is totally different what do you think pod pod thinks you look stunning oh, thank you very much do you like it not really. Why not? Yeah, I just feel a bit plain, really. See, she looks like an NPC. Yeah, after it, you can go, yeah, she looks, yeah, she looks all right. But like before you were like, wow, she's got a different style. The the message of this show is just all off. They then do her second round of public analysis to see if the, if the men would now marry her, possibly. Play. I would definitely snog her because I think she looks natural and I think she... <laughs> Look at her face. She's like, have I really dressed like this for this random man to only snog me? At least put a ring on it. It's pretty smart, so it's natural. So it's pretty good. He didn't even say you would snug a marry her. The man with a broken arm won't even put a ring on it. I know it'd be a bit harder for him, but Christ, at least you can just see it. They then cut to her seeing a boyfriend for the first time with a new look. Oh How my are god, you? Kai. <laughs> you look so different. I know. I don't know what to think actually. A new look really wouldn't. No, you look very pretty. Oh, that's actually a fair reaction from the boyfriend. He was like, ah. I kind of liked it before. <laughs> so yeah, you look pretty, but shall we just go back to the leopard? Yeah, let's let's go back to that. I read that from the boyfriend because he could have been like, no, no, you should keep this. But he like could tell that she wasn't really feeling it. And he's like, no, I'll just literally go back to how you were before it. But yeah, just to round it off, you can tell that this show is just like, it just represents everything from when I was younger. Like you have to care what people think. You have to dress a certain way. Otherwise people will look at you. Like dress how you want to dress, right? If you see something that looks a little bit controversial to someone else, you wear that. As, as long as it makes you happy, why does it care what anyone else thinks? Anyway, if you would like to watch me break down another British TV show, click right here. Or you want to see me react to some shows on the Reacts channel, click right here.